This is the Pete and Sebastian Show with Pete Corielli and Sebastian Maniscalco. Pete and Sebastian Show is back. I don't even know what number it is anymore. They just keep on coming. What's going on, bro? We're both in like a light beige, the uh, yellowest or something. Sebastian Maniscalco, of course, on the other end. Don't forget, big film premiere, July 4th weekend, right? Memorial Day. On Memorial Day, Memorial Day weekend, I'm sorry. Uh, bro, I'm thinking about doing a drive-in for it because we have a drive-in back in our town. This thing is so popular. They're putting the Buffalo Bills game on Sunday and people go to the drive-in to watch it on the big screen and tailgate and, and listen to it on, wow. simultaneously. Wow. Uh, do, do they yeah. show movies there? Yeah, as soon as the weather gets warm. So I'm wondering if yours will be there. That'd be a nice one to go see there. Oh, oh, yeah. No, absolutely. Yeah, Memorial Day weekend. The movie's coming out. Oh. It's called About My Father, starring Robert De Niro, Kim Cattrall, myself, Great cast. I think it's a, a real a funny and feel-good movie. And uh, De Niro and I are supposed to go to Alabama in January to do a scene. We're going to do a pickup scene. New scene. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. So that's happening. Cool. That, that's going to happen. And then... Uh, did I tell you? I got a call... From Scorsese's people? Did I tell you the story? No. No. So last week I got a call from Scorsese's people saying that Scorsese wants you to perform at his birthday party. Holy At his eightieth birthday party. So this is in November. It's going to be in New York. <sighs> so I committed to it. I feel I felt like this is something that you just you got to do this, right? Yeah, yeah, you do. Here's here's my dilemma. I committed to it. It's on a Wednesday. This was an oversight. Tuesday night, Serafina's little recital. Right? Mm hmm. And I told her I would never miss a recital. What you take? I thought you said the thing was Wednesday and Serafina's thing is Tuesday. Well, I mean, that's a tight. It's in New York. So Tuesday night is the recital, right? Yeah. I I could... <clears throat> the thing is, is I was planning on staying... So I'm going to be in New York anyway. So on Monday, I was... I'm done with my gigs in Atlantic City on Sunday. So I was going to stay Monday, Tuesday, do the gig Wednesday, come home Thursday. But now, if I want to make the recital, I got to come back Monday. Recital yeah. Tuesday. Probably yeah. do a Tuesday night red eye so I can make it to New York in time and then do the show. Well, what, when is the show with Scorsese? Isn't it Wednesday night? It's Wednesday night. Well, what I'm saying with, th with these flights and whatnot, like, sometimes I like to get there the day before because, you know, got right. the cancellation and then you can't get out and, and what. I don't like to, like, like that's cutting it a little close, right. but. Actually, as they're talking this right. out, it's 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 definitely feasible. But anyway, uh, hey. it's gonna be at a it's gonna be at a restaurant, 150 people. You're at the level I'm saying here, though. We talked about the Maserati I brought up last week. You're at the level. I mean, you're you're at the Kevin Hart level. Stuff is going on where you know what you do is, like you said, you go do your AC gigs. By the way, thanks for asking me to be a part of that. Wish I could have. Then you yeah. go, <clears throat> really do. Then you go home, you watch the recital, you get your private jet it, you know, to New York. Uh, you pop down, jet. you this do. Is, this is commercial. Yeah. This is commercial. Private jet. It's, 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 what? <laughs> what, what, <laughs> what, what, what do you think? I'm going to spend 70 grand to go do this thing? Come on. Yeah. 
This is going, <laughs> bro. You do this. You do this. You're the lead in his next and possibly last film. His his Swan Grace lead guy. <laughs> this is gonna be a who's who. Uh, everybody from Bobby Cavanaugh to Joe Pesci. And, uh, you know, I, I, Ralph Macchio might get an invite. This thing is going to be Italian heavy, bro. It's going to be fun. No, what an honor, dude. That is so cool. Um, yeah, I think you can make it all work. My question is, how much time are you doing for for this? Is it 20? Is it, um, 20. Now, is it? This is a few funny things going on in my life, or is it more of a do it a do it do a Don Rickles sort of a thing where you know Daenerys? You know, oh gosh, last time I did that an hour, Bobby, you know, he yelled caught. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you say that, but uh, or is that like, well, you're not a Don Rickles guy, so you don't do that kind of thing. Like, what do you like? What's the play in a situation like this? I think the play is material here. I might might do a little crowd work depending on who's there. Uh, but I only got 20 minutes, so I'll I'll probably do something. I don't know. I haven't really given it much thought. Just talking it out here on the cast, though. Maybe I start with a little, hey, that that does here, or that that that, or maybe, you know, a Scorsese. I do have a Scorsese story about, but I don't think it's that. It's a story, but it's not going to get a huge laugh. I don't know the man intimately enough to, uh, although, did I tell you one time we did a Zoom with Scorsese? This is after The Irishman. We had a Zoom because we were pitching an idea to him for a TV show, and I hadn't ever Zoomed with the man, and the man, I, I don't think I've ever seen a cooler move. He fired up the Zoom, and he was in a robe. Oh, I, I, I don't know if you told me that before. Uh, I don't know, but it, that's it, unbelievable. It, was, it wasn't just like a, a this thing was a robe. Like, you ever see those robes? Like, they're, like, they're thin, right? Some robes are just thin and just a robe. This was a robe where it looked like you needed another person to help you put it on. <laughs> it looked like a king. Almost like something you take off when you get into the ring. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> but he did the thing. Now, what you robe. take on pitching to someone in a robe, does that mean they're so comfortable it's even better? Or is it, oh, hey, guys, this guy's about to take a shower and I'm hitting him with a pitch? <laughs> <laughs> no, it was like, you know, the type of guy that it was in the morning, right? And he was just, you know, probably getting his morning going. The type of guy that drinks coffee, right, in the morning. But he's got a saucer underneath the car. Oh, I love it. I love it, man. And he brought that into frame, you know, and he's sitting there talking with the coffee and looking over to the side. Oh, that's so old school. <sighs> Oh, Elegant. man. Oh, Elegant. God. Oh. I'm getting chills. I'm getting chills just thinking about it. I love that move. So what do you got? Good morning, everybody. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So tell me what you got. I'm looking forward to hearing with the robe on. Oh, wow. So, so do you say when you're up there, I'm thinking like, you know, maybe a joke like you look over at Scorsese and go, so is this my... Thank you for putting me in the Irishman, or am I going to be the lead in the next thing you do? Because cause it is. Are we even now, or am I up on you? <laughs> <laughs> then you got, like, you got to figure LDC is probably going to be there. Uh, you know, you hit him up with, uh, so have you played paddle ball since me? Or have I just <laughs> never been invited back? Like, I like to think there's leaves on the court and nobody's played. <laughs> or did I do something to never get invited back? <laughs> <laughs> hey, I didn't uh, fly halfway across the country just to sing happy birthday to you, all right? Marty, no offense. I'm going to get some things out of the way while I'm here, too. All right? <laughs> so, Pete. Yeah. Omaha Steaks, right? Big supporter oh, of the show. Love him. Love him. 
Not only do they got steaks, Pete, they got chicken. Made some last night for Lana. Took a little chicken breast, pounded it out. Little salt, little pepper, little olive oil. Put that in the oven, right, for about 21 minutes. Brought it out. Didn't eat it. Cut it up. Saved it. I put it on my chicken the next day for lunch. Can you get a better product? What do you mean you put it on your chicken? It is your chicken. <laughs> right? Put it on my salad. You don't oh. get these types of reads oh. on other podcasts. Oh we leave it in. The holidays are right around the corner, but until then, let's enjoy this fall air, and that means fall grilling with cookouts, tailgate parties, and so much more. And take advantage, people, of the 50% off site-wide by shopping their friends and family sale. Go to omahasteaks.com and use my promo code, THECAST. Check out and get $30 off your order. Don't wait, people. Go to omahasteaks.com and stock up today. Omaha Steaks isn't just steaks. It's the best steak of your life, guaranteed. Pete? And don't forget to score that extra $30 off your order when you use the cast at checkout. Remember, the cast at checkout. Visit omahasteaks.com, promo code the cast at checkout. Minimum order may be required. We had we had mentioned this on the podcast off the air, but I want to get into it now. You saw the rest of Dahmer, and you had some things Got you want to go over. Okay, so let, let's let's dive back in. There. And listen, I know the crowd is split on Dahmer. I know some people don't think it's evil, don't watch it. It's dark, and I know other people are fascinated right. with it. So let, let's let's right. let's get into it. Well, you know, and look, you bring up a, a good point. People are both ways about it, but I lean more into the uh, yeah. It's been a while. I'm having some fun with it, but there's also you know. A, a bit of a self-awareness. This is what this is to me, all right? It's like, you know, all right, everybody gets lured by a crazy person. Everybody maybe, you know, you don't want to drink something that's not. But when you're stepping into a house and you're commenting that it smells like dead meat and you go in anyway, you know, I'm sorry. Like, they, they you know, the lady keeps fighting to try to get a memorial, you know, which is nice for the people yeah. where the building was. Yeah. What's your, what's your take on memorials like like where things happened you know when they you know like i i, I look let me just make it a little more comfortable for you you can't, you can't have a memorial for everyone that dies everywhere all right within uh, 200 years there's gonna be the stones and statues everywhere you know what i'm saying it's like even you ever drive by the highway and you'll just see like a cross with burning candle on the shoulder and you're like Who's coming to light that candle? Who's like pu pulling over? Of what? I've seen one time, bro. I saw two. I swear to God. And I'm like, now that I think about, it, maybe the second one was someone coming to light a candle for the first one, and they got hit pulling over. I mean, but my my point is, <laughs> yeah, we've seen those. Um, am I? To, but like, am I to assume? By the way, when you see one of those crosses on the on the shoulder, that somebody passed away like right there. Is that why that's right there? Yeah. 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 So so we had one close to our house. It's about a half a mile down the street. And uh someone flew off the cliff. Right? The car just <laughs> right off the cliff. Wow. So they not only had a memorial there, but yeah. people would come and bring stuff that was associated with the person who died, right? So not only were there candles, but then I guess this person must have been in the motorcycles or whatever. They had like little toy motorcycles they left there. No. Oh, man. I've never had anybody, well, I had, I had a buddy who died in a car accident back in the day, but our group never went to where he got into the car accident and made a makeshift, you know, like... uh Whatever they call it, it's not more. <laughs> what, what do they call it? Like a it's a like, cross, usually with like a can, like one of them tall 
candles. With, yeah, I usually see yeah, with yeah, Jesus but they on call that stuff. something. Like, don't they call a that shrine? a shrine? A shrine. Yeah, we never made a shrine right. at the site. Right. But to right. your point, they keep coming back, and it's like the shit's refreshed. You know, like I don't right. know yeah. when this happens. The, does the group get together and go, all right, listen, I got January. Right. You got February. Like they, 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 <laughs> right, they, right. They, they, they appoint people to maintain the damn thing. That thing's still there. See, it happened three that, years ago. My, my, my commitment to the shrine would fade with my grief. You know what I'm saying? Like the first yeah, month, yeah. I'd be all over the shrine. I'd be nice. With the, but as I get less sad, it would be more like. Uh, do the shrine you know it's like <laughs> I'm, I'm like the shrine is now the only thing bringing me down is going back to the shrine you know what i'm saying and when, when, when you see those freaking when you see those those temporary memorials for like when something happens like that with the candles like you say and people bring stuff who decides like when they go all right it's we're gonna get the broom now you're like who who makes that call when it goes back to being a bench you know what i mean or whatever it was like you never see that guy coming in at the end sweeping up all the flowers and stuff but um, yeah no, anyway I, I think i know i think that's just taking care like, like if a street cleaner comes by and he sees a shrine right do you think he goes yeah. around that or do you think he just goes there fuck this i'll clean this shit right up too <laughs> no I, I think he calls the headquarters <laughs> And he goes, what do you want me to do about the shrine? Half the candles are out. The flowers are dying. I don't know. All right, give him one more day. He says, give him one more day. One more day with the shrine. (laughs) Uh, So I don't know if you go and you, you know, I know this lady's been fighting for the, but it's still an abandoned lot. Yeah. What else fascinates me about this Dharma thing is the the way his, I, I did a little hard investigation for the cast on David Dharma. His younger brother. Oh yeah. yeah. So he What's was up with this guy. So apparently he was in college uh, when Dama did his first murder, but hadn't been caught yet. So he was he was like kind of getting out of college. But once Dama got caught, he changed his name, went off the grid, no interviews, no nothing. They were kind of close growing up. You know, they were seven years apart. But here's something crazy: Jeffrey Dama named his little brother. The parents like, what do you want to name him? And he's like, let's call him David. How about that going through life? Well, my real name's David, but a guy who ate seventeen people named me that, so I'm, I'm switching it up. So did apparently, he switch his the, name? The, the whole name. His he first switched? and last name. Yeah, oh, like wow. he could be your neighbor, and you wouldn't know. Last we heard was years ago. His mother gave an interview because when the parents split up, he went with the mom, and the Dama went with the dad to dissect animals. So they went separate ways. And then now the mom said in an interview years ago that my son is a uh, professional, you know, doing good in life, got two kids, living a great life, no interviews, nobody knows, changed his name. So do who you knows where think, this guy is. Do you think his wife knows who he really is? Yes. My, yeah? Yes. Yeah. Come on. Your wife what do you think? That's a but, tough but, thing to keep. It, that is a tough. Uh, but where where do you stop? Where do you stop it? Is it he goes to his wife? Listen, before they got married, he goes, "Listen, I'm really David Dom. I'm Jeffrey Dahmer's brother. Don't ever." ever. Oh my god! <laughs> Don't but, ever say I mean, anything to anybody. But what would you what would you do if he doesn't say it to like six months in? She's in love with him. And then he goes, I'm Jeffrey Dahmer's brother. Wow, what do you do? Because now I'm thinking, if I have a kid with you, it might eat people. (laughs) Oh, Jesus Christ. Oh, you're not going there. You're not going there. Like, if if you know that about, you have kids with Jeffrey Dahmer's brother, you're not like bopping in a little more than usual upstairs. What are you doing? (laughs) <laughs> and then you go down, oh, guys. He's just, he's just playing with his trains. He's just playing with his trains. Thank God, you know. Like the first time your kid walks by and sees roadkill, and he goes, "Ew, gross." Are you like, "Nice, 
<laughs> you know, we were so afraid you were going to want to take it into the garage and cut his head off. Why? Oh, no, nothing, nothing, nothing. <laughs> But you got to tell your wife. You got to tell your wife. I feel like you can't, you know. Cause she yeah, comes. but do you think anybody else knows? I mean, how the hell do you keep no. that such a secret where nobody knows that you are the brother of one of the most awful people ever? I mean. If you told Lana that now, if you said, listen, John Wayne Gacy was my uncle, was my mom's brother. Do you think you could trust Lana? Because John Wayne Gacy, what, he lived a few blocks from you, bro. It's totally legit, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you think you could trust Lana not to tell, not even her mom? Yeah, but you know what? I got to flip it around. If I got information like that on my wife, I could have uh, kept that quiet. Oh, no. I don't even <laughs> think I could not say it at a cocktail party. <laughs> let alone let alone tell my immediate family you know i mean jack you gotta tell them who, you're not gonna believe who her uncle was i'll just give you this 18 dead 18 dead go ahead jack tell them. <laughs> oh god yeah no it's well this uh, leads yeah this leads me to another, another question i want to ask you then because this is good you saw the part in the dharma thing where as you had told me on one of the last casts that guy paid a lot of money to have all of his stuff buried, not burned. He had it buried in his dump. And the one guy, they show a scene of one of the uh, guys working at the dump picked up the drill that Dami used to use to drill the people. And he goes, put that goddamn thing down. That's getting buried. <clears throat> and he made the guy throw it away, right? Mm -hmm. First of all, if I was the guy working at the garbage dump, I think I would have came back at night with a flashlight. But that's another story. But here's the question. You're at a cocktail party. Some guy's a collector. You go down. He's showing you some things he got. And he goes, you know, I got some dark things, too. Uh, I got the drill that Jeffrey Dahmer used, was using on people. Do you, if you offer it to you, do you hold it? No. No. No, I don't even know if I, I want to see it. I don't even know if I want to see it. He's do only got time... He says to you, listen, I got a bunch of collectibles. I, 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 they're all in that tight things. I can only grab one. We're on a time thing here. I can either get you to show you the drill that Dama used, or I got a pipe Mark Twain used to puff out of when he was on his porch. What do you just, what do you want to quick see? You, you want to see the Mark Twain pipe over the drill? Guy, I, I, I'd be like, <laughs> do I even got to say it out loud? Get the drill, guy. I've, I've seen a pipe. I mean, I've seen a drill too, but I'm seeing it a drill in a whole new light. Oh man, this is just, God, this is sick. unbelievable. This is sick. What that poor this lady is... went through that lived next to him. She went through. She she was having PTSD. That poor lady went through hell. She should be able to sue the city for freaking ten million dollars. She should be living in Martha's Vineyard on the freaking beach in the nicest place. I know, I know. She Jesus. died How actually in 2013. She passed away, that lady. She's not even living anymore. But, I mean, talk about falling on deaf ears. This guy could have been caught, I think, six or seven different times. And he was, I don't know, he had the luck of the Irish. He was evading police he he got pulled over they they asked him what was in the back he said the grass clippings he the cops were in his house uh it, it just it's the, amazing the, yeah. how many times all right guys if you want to avoid boring basic and bland gifts this year lord knows i do i'm trying so hard and that's why i went to uncommon goods i'm not kidding Uncommon Goods is your secret weapon. Uncommon Goods is here to make your holiday shopping stress-free by scouring the globe. I mean, they go everywhere looking for the most remarkable and truly unique gifts for everyone on your list. You know, whether you're shopping for your secret Santa or your entire family, Uncommon Goods knows exactly what they want. Now, listen, me personally, I was looking around the kids' toy room going, we need some extra games and toys. Went to Uncommon Goods, got about six games for the kids. I haven't seen them in three days. Beautiful. When you shop at Uncommon Goods, you're supporting artists, 
and small independent businesses, which we love. These are fine products, often made in small batches. So shop now before they sell out this holiday season. Uncommon Goods looks for products that are high quality, unique, and often handmade or made in the U.S. They have the most meaningful out-of-the-ordinary gifts anywhere. They, they do. It's almost like, you know, you're getting access to these unbelievable goods made by these incredible artists in some, like, little small mountain town, perhaps, that would never get to you otherwise. But Uncommon Goods gets it to you, and this is how they get it to you. Bro, it's equivalent to the cast. Very unique and uncommon. That's what we do here at the Pete and Sebastian Show. And you can get 50% off your next gift. Go to UncommonGoods.com slash the cast. That's UncommonGoods.com slash the cast for 15% off. Don't miss out on this limited time offer. Uncommon Goods, we're all out of the ordinary. The boy that he had, yeah. Now, again, another question. Um, when the father and the lawyer are there with Dahmer and they go, listen, we want you to say that you're crazy. We want to do an insane plea. And Dahmer says, but I'm not crazy. I'm not crazy, you know? My, my thing is, it, it, it don't matter what you think. You filleted a liver. You're crazy. You tried to li- dig up a corpse at a graveyard to fuck it. I don't... <clears throat> like, shouldn't he have to defend that he's not crazy? Like, yeah. <clears throat> I don't even get that. I'm just, I don't yeah, care. But, like, don't matter what you say anymore. What you did is fucking nuts. <clears throat> I, I know what he did was nuts. However, the way he behaves when he's not in that mode is quite, you know, not when I right. say normal, but it's not like he's sitting in his in his cell and you're interviewing him. He's like, hey, yeah, I got it. You know, no, like right. You know, <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, it's not like he's in a straitjacket. The guy seems to be moving through life in in kind of a normal fashion. Uh, I don't know what the hell this was, though, outside of that. I just don't know what, obviously, what he did was crazy. I, 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 yeah, I don't know. It's, it's, a, it's a tough one. And plus, if he doesn't want to plead, like, insanity, then oh. that's... Good for you know the families. At least the, they know that he's going to go into a prison and suffer oh. and, and what have you. Oh, you know, if he... oh, I see. That's right, because then he gets to go to a, a facility instead. That's yeah, right. yeah. Now, you know how he drank a lot of Budweiser. Yeah. Do you think? Do you think that the people at Anheuser Busch have an emergency meeting after it's? pretty obvious that Jeffrey Dahmer like you could google it he loves Budweiser like is that not good do you think for the company uh, uh, uh well didn't we have a case like this recently with COVID when they were saying it was the coronavirus and Corona's stock went down because no one was buying Corona beer oh, because crazy. it was associated with with the right. virus, I mean, I gotta think that's I don't know. Anheuser Busch is a big behemoth. I don't know if they're suffering at all in sales. I don't think anybody's ever thinking about Dahmer drinking Budweiser when they when they get it at a bar. But who knows? Yeah, I, I I don't know, man. I don't know. I mean, it's pretty. The, I saw a thing in the uh, online. I don't know if it was true or not, but it said that families were suing Budweiser. Uh, after seeing the Netflix thing, because apparently Budweiser is the preferred beer of quite a few past monsters that have done bad things. You know, they tend to drink Budweiser. So oh, really? I don't know. Yeah, so but it's just did... a, it's just a cheap quality beer. It makes sense that your everyday person without a big salary is going to drink a Budweiser. I don't think yeah, it's that yeah. odd, you know? But, yeah. Um, another question. So he had the fish. Do you think <clears throat> if Dama had a dog, instead of the fish, okay? And he was murdering and doing everything he did in front, with the dog, just there, right? Maybe even throwing the dog something here and there. My question is, do you think a dog, because he still takes it out for walks into the park, so it's seeing other things, could a dog sense that it's living with a crazy person? Or would it just think like, 
You you really do. You think like yeah. the tail would be tucked in? It would be like this is fucking crazy. If he had a dog, I wouldn't be surprised if that dog ran away. <laughs> really? Oh yeah. I think the first chance that thing got to to run out that door, he would have been down the street barking. Th- like a dog can just sense darkness, right? Because you would think the dog's like telling other dogs, "Oh God, is it? We got meat smell all the time. I'm licking <laughs> blood on the floors. It's like a, a 24-hour buffet over here with this guy. <laughs> and he's always home too. You're never alone. He's always home. He's always home. It's great. You're never alone. What? Is this too? Is this too morbid? This this. <laughs> I think we're getting. I think we're going down a rat hole here. Like, I'm just like feeling feel... so comfortable finally in the new setup. <laughs> all right. <laughs> I know this might be too comfortable because I'm uncomfortable. <laughs> all right. All right. All right. That's it. That's the last one of my notes. Forget the dog. Forget it. <laughs> oh, God. No, seriously. God rest those people. But, um, you know, heads up, people. You got to be careful out there. There's a lot of crazies. I mean, it's no oh, joke. Yeah. It's no joke. Oh, yeah. You know? Don't well, have to sip you something. To you talk... don't open yourself. <laughs> Speaking of crazies, have you had to talk yeah. with Sadie about, hey, stranger danger, let me know if anybody, you know, touches you inappropriately? Yeah. Is this Has this been, like, communicated? And if so, at what age was oh, yeah. it said? Well, I, years ago in the cast, we brought that up, how I had, like, do I would do tests, like, go by. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Put my, yeah. yeah. But now, no, I still definitely once in a while I ask her, I'm like, Say, anyone going near you? And she's always like, no, that, no. You know, she would tell me right away. But now, and I think I saw a, a clip of you guys were saying you were going to talk about it on your, on the doctor podcast you do, but uh, this freaking fentanyl, man. You know, somebody brought it up responsibly to the kids at somewhere she was. My Jackie was actually with them, and she comes home, and she's like, Dad, why are they doing this? I can't even have the candy. What's going on? I'm like, listen, when we were kids, like you said, it was razor blades we had to look for. I go, we're not saying you can't have it. You just, and then she's like, why are they doing it? And that's what I don't understand, bro. Are they putting it in candy just to get it over the border? And then, and then they take it out of the candy and they sell it to adults. So like, what what do they think? Like a kid's going to open it up and eat the fentanyl. And why would they want to just kill a kid? Well, why does Dahmer want to eat people? I mean, it's just like there's crazy people out there that want to inflict. Yeah, but the uh, co- I thought the cartel just wants to make money selling drugs. I didn't think they were into murdering children. That seems no. That I don't think seem... the cartel. Th- I, I'm talking. I, I I don't know if the fentanyl thing is a widespread thing where they're saying there's a lot of candy tainted with it. I thought crazy people were at their house putting fentanyl in candy to harm kids. Oh Jesus! Yeah, that's I, what I'm afraid. I'm afraid that like all, all these people that are, who's you know who knows who was going on out there. Someone's gonna start putting this shit in milk all in the same day. Yeah. So so here's my thing on the Halloween. Yeah. The Sadie go and get trick or treats, but back at the house. You have the same bucket that she's got, or whatever she uses to collect it, and you pop populate that with a variety of different candy. And when she comes home and puts her bucket down, you kind of do a switch job. You think she would like? Right. She'd be looking, going, "Where's those gumballs that people gave me? They're not in here." Like. Well, or just say, yeah, but, go get the candy, collect the candy. When we when we bring it home, we throw it all out, and I'll give you candy that we buy. All right, guys. Got another ad here, and it's an important one. Miracle brand time. Did you guys know traditional bed sheets can harbor more bacteria than a toilet seat? I, uh, my wife was ahead of the game. She always makes us air out the sheets for like 30, 40 minutes before we can make the bed, even if nothing went down the night before, you know? I never understood that, but apparently there's bacteria, and it can lead to acne, allergies, stuffy noses, and quite frankly, it's just a little gross. Miracle Brand offers a whole line of self-cleaning, eco-friendly bedding sheets, such as pillowcases, comforters, and they prevent 99% of bacteria, and they require three less times of laundry. You understand what I'm saying? You got to wash your sheets 
three less times often if you use Miracle Brand. Using silver infused fabrics originally developed by NASA, are you kidding me? The space program? Miracle Brand sheets are thermal regulators and designed to keep you at the perfect temperature all night long. These sheets are infused with natural silver that prevents 99% of the bacteria growth, leaving them to stay cleaner and fresh three times longer than any other sheets. No more gross odors, okay? Miracle sheets are luxuriously comfortable without the high price tag of other luxury brands, something we could use now, some low prices. Get yourself miracle sheets. They're the perfect gift for your spouse, your friends, your family. Who doesn't want to sleep better? Who doesn't want a more luxurious feeling from their bed sheets? And since these come with three free towels, you heard that right, three free towels. You get two gifts in one just in time for the holidays. Go to trymiracle.com slash the cast to try it today or to gift it to someone special this holiday season. And we've got a special for you. We always do for our listeners. To save 40%, be sure to use the promo code THECAST at checkout. And thank you, Miracle Brand, for sponsoring this episode of the Pete and Sebastian Show. I'm not worried about any of my people around here putting fentanyl in the candy. I'm worried about somebody putting fentanyl in the candy before it gets sealed and sold at oh. the supermarket. So, so there's a, there's as much chance of fentanyl being in the candy I'm putting oh. in my separate bucket. Gotcha. I don't know. Gotcha. I mean, I don't know. If there's nothing funny in it's that. Sad. But I just yeah. It's sad. It's sad that we got to think this way that the kids can't go out and get a couple candy bars and enjoy Halloween without right. This type. What does of it look like back. anyway? Like, what would it? I think it's when they liquid. Go, put it in, I, I, liquid. I think it's liquid. I think I don't know. I could be wrong. I don't know. Fentanyl could be a powder. I don't, I have no idea. So you take like a needle and you inject it into a Skittle? Yeah. Oh my God. Wow, bro. Again, I don't know enough about this to really do a deep dive on it, but it could be anything. It could be cyanide. It could be fentanyl. It could be poison, rat poison, whatever the hell people decide to put in this shit. Uh, And and again, I, I don't know like what we're doing yet for Halloween, where we're going to trick or treating. But my sister lives in an area where they're so their neighborhood is so gun ho on Halloween and they decorate and all this all this stuff and they got stuff flying across the yard that yeah. you got people coming from, you know, thirty, forty miles away to trick or treat in their neighborhood. Now, what's your take on like people coming from other cities to come right. to your neighborhood to get trick or treats. Right. What that's it. Well we it, got that neighborhood for within the town and like a couple of towns over there are a little rural so they don't really have a town. But yeah, they come where we are because we have all the sidewalks and the houses here. I dig it, man, because it's just very festive. We have a party every year. We get some pizzas, a bunch of kids start at our house. They all go trick or treating, come back here. And, uh, I mean, I'm doling out candy like crazy, man. Just popping it out left and right. Getting a lot of thank yous. Uh, I I like it. I like it. Not going to lie. I got a flip take on it. Because right. I've seen it firsthand. What's happening is the people that are coming from 30 or 40 miles away tend That's to That's far. Be, That's crazy. Yeah, they're, they're, they're coming from... A lot of different areas. No, five, ten minutes max by me. Max. Fine. Fine. You want to bring in your whatever, five or six-year-old and you're a family that doesn't have a neighborhood or lives in an apartment. Whatever the hell it is, you want to bring your kids and have a proper Halloween. I get it. What's what ha- what's happening is there's a lot of like 15, 16-year-old kids coming in and, you know, not even dressed, causing causing some problems you know what i'm saying yeah yeah you know like it, you know maybe not so nice to the other trick-or-treaters or the you know I, i've seen it firsthand oh, it's like wow. they, they ain't from they ain't from that little area they're coming in and and kind of uh not making it a pleasant experience so I'm like, no, you know, saying, you know? It's just, that's what I'm saying. You can't even have anything nice or good without somebody coming in and shitting all over the lawn. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. No, you're right. That's aggravating. You know, I thought I thought they were coming in and they were just enjoying it, but you know, no, and there no. should be every town. 
should put up, a, and our town should too, you know, I don't know, what is it, 13 and under, I think, should be the cutoff. If you're over 13, you can come along, walk the neighborhood, but don't bring a bag because no one's putting <laughs> anything in. 13 and under. <clears throat> well, some people come in that are 14, 15. Yeah, but if someone comes up as a teenager, you could be like, come on, you know, it's 13 and under. What are we doing? But anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what else you got on that little sheet of yours? Oh, speaking of, by the way, Halloween, Sadie had a little recital the other day for piano, and I I, just, I played this thing for her. I told her she should do it, and she's like, I'll do it, Daddy. Tell anyone. She was doing like it was a Halloween sort of a pageant. Uh, recital and the song she was doing right before she started she did the beginning of halloween dun, 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 like, like four times went into her song at the end of a song which is short back to the dun, 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 and just faded out oh. and you could see all the adults like it was halloween right oh yeah it was cool it was cool that's beautiful so that's it on the dharma uh I got this whole... Th oh, I got an Italian take if you're into going through some of these. Let's do it. All right. Let's get... I don't know if we're doing any more Italian take music, Lou, but if you're there, put that in. But anyway, um, let's start it off. You got the fall season, and I've been noticing because I live by a college, uh, especially around now, there's a creek down the block from me, so you see a lot of easels. Is that how you pronounce it? Lana being a painter, you know, where they paint, yeah, yeah. where they set up the easel. Yeah. And I noticed, I was walking down, and I noticed some guy, a student, uh, doing an easel. And then there's three of them all scattered over. And two of them, within their overall painting of the creek, they were getting a couple houses in the painting. What you take on your house being in a, in a painting that someone's doing on an easel? Right? Like, I know we have a problem with someone just photographing the house. But what if you come out and someone's got an easel and, and your house isn't like half the overall painting? I don't think I got a problem with that. I think uh, if it's in a piece of artwork, yeah, I mean, if it's hanging on the wall, I, come on. If, any, if you go over to somebody's house and there's a painting on the wall and it's your yeah. mother's house, would you, you know, and it's in the background, would you go, what? Is that my mom's huh? I don't think you can pin, pinpoint that, can you? Well, I, I, I don't know that you can pinpoint it, but uh, I don't know. You just paint my house. I mean, if you came up and you set up a tripod and you were taking a photo of my house, I'd have a huge problem with that. Like, look, put where you live, right? I know that, like, walking that little area up by you, you know, what if someone just said, uh, Nah, I just love the way it all kind of comes together. They got they got to try. They, they're doing an easel right out there, getting the front of everyone's driveway. Mm -hmm. You go in. <laughs> you <know? laughs> I mean, even if he's wearing that Frenchie hat while he's doing it, you know. <laughs> I don't know. I don't it's know. I, for some reason, if it's in a painting, I feel yeah. like it's less evasive than a photograph. Right. That's my thing. I tend to agree. I tend to agree. I, 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 I'm I with you on that one. Um, okay. So let's move on to the next one. <sighs> Jackie was, uh, long story short, she did a run with a friend recently, and she was telling me that the friend got to ask someone to take a photo of them. And then she goes, and then my friend, like, looked at the photo and asked for the person to take another one. What you take? Well, when you ask a stranger to take a photo of you, can you can you do a retake? Can you say, can you do a retake? Yeah, I got a theory on this. Uh, <clears throat> more often than not, we'll ask somebody to take a photo of Lana and I, and then Lana will look at the photo, not like it, and ask the person to do it again. My belief, wow. yeah, my belief is, <sighs> there's many times I looked at a photo and the, they cut my head off, my arm's not in the photo, whatever. You don't look good. But I go, right, right. All right, this, this is it. This, I got to live with that. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Bro, I say thank you to them before I even see the photo. I take my phone yeah. back. Thank you very much. I'm, I'm gone. It's almost like you said, let's see what we got. You know? 
Yeah, I, I don't I, even look at the photo in front of the person. Right, right. I'll look at the photo when they leave, and then I'll swear up and down. Him, motherfucker. You know, like, but Lana, and to her credit, right. wants to get the best possible photo. Because your thought is, why not get something right? Why Why do you got to? I'm just like, it's the luck of the draw. It's our fault that, you know, we didn't we don't have somebody else to take it. So we're relying right. on this person. But here's 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 a here's the deal though. And I've done right, this. Right. You ever had like a I don't know, let's say you're at the ocean and you got a lot of people at the beach or whatever, or maybe walking on a boardwalk. Do you ever size up the person and go, they don't know how to take a photo? Just on the look. I size them up, but not for do they know how to take it. I size them up for that guy's not going to want to take our photo. I look for somebody that, you know, <laughs> that I think is going to go, sure, you know? Like, that that's what I look for. And my, and, yeah. I look for young people in oh, their 20s. Right. In their 20s. Right? I also look move. for women opposed to a man because I believe women know how to take a photo on an iPhone a lot better than a man does. If you ever get a woman You're taking right. your photo, she will not only take a portrait, she'll take a landscape and she'll give you different angles on the photo or oh, a man yeah. just give you one shot and that's, and that's it. I've had the man like, after he takes the photo, he hands it to me like a baton in a, in a track meet, like, 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 you know, like making it clear he ain't taking a second one because he's already got two steps away as he's handing it off. Yeah, yeah. And the thing is, when someone takes a photo of you, I I just take it for granted that they did the best they could do. Yeah. So for me to ask them to take another one, now we're getting into territory where I'm teaching you how to take a better photo. I don't know you. You don't know me. You were halfway up across the sidewalk. Now I'm taking up your time. So I hand it to you. You take the shot. And like you said, it is what it is, baby. It is what it is. You know how how Lana, how involved Lana gets in the photo? She'll go. And I'll be, you know, I'll be the subject, right? And she'll frame up the photo and tell the person, right here like she'll tell the person hold it right here she'll give it to the person and then she'll get in the photo with me wow oh, i love it wow we do a lot of the uh just find the rock or something to lean the the thing on and set the 10 second timer i don't know if you yeah. do that move a lot no i kind of like i like the countdown i love the countdown because you got you get 10 seconds, you kind of, you know, you don't even put your game face on, right? about three seconds, you get ready. And when it hits that one, you're like, ha, it's beautiful. <laughs> you you know exactly when you got to come in with it, man. But, yeah, I like that. I like that. So, uh, okay. By the way, uh, what was that one? I saw, okay. Uh, a friend of mine went on vacation. He was showing me photos. And this stuck out to me because I wanted to get your take on this. You ever see when you're at like a beach resort somewhere like that and you come out of your room, a lot of these resorts have these winding sidewalks that lead to the pool or to the beach and a lot of times they'll have hammocks, right? So it was a photo he was showing me of he was napping in the hammock, you know, and his wife caught him napping in the hammock and I'm like, do you do the, do you do the public hammock nap? Like, like he was right by the sidewalk, so people were walking by about three feet on their way to the beach from him in the hammock. Because I, I was thinking, I see these hammocks, but I never lay in them in that, in that kind of environment. Unless it's in my private suite that no one can see me in. The only, where, the only place I public sleep is an airplane. Other than that, you don't see me sleeping at the gate at an airport, at a park bench, laying down on a hammock. No. I don't public sleep. I think really? it's... Uh, <laughs> it's a... 
I, I, but, listen, I, was, I I've, I've closed my eyes in a waiting room here and there, but I, I think that overall motto, again, learning from the cast, for you young listeners out there, you don't public sleep as a man. This ain't Mexico. You don't put your sombrero <laughs> down and take a fucking siesta, all right? <laughs> so, yeah. Go home and you nap in your house or your office. That's what I feel. I feel like you got to nap in somewhere private, but on the flip side of your statement, where my head went to is you think he's really sleeping or you think they set that up for the photo? Do you think she goes, go go by the hammock and act like you're sleeping oh, and I'll take oh, a photo? Yeah. That's, that's a good point. That's a good point. But e- either either way, either way, it's like, I I just, I see those hammocks and I'm like, I, the only time I ever see it, someone in them is when they first get to the hotel and they go, oh, look, they have hammocks. And then they get on and they do that half swing and they go, oh. And then you're like, great. And you're not going to be on it ever again. But you like to say, guy, if we were on a date, I'd be getting the check right now. I just want you to know that. <laughs> you know, we've done over 500 casts together. I don't think I've ever seen you check your watch during a, during a show. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I hope no, your mom no. sends you a text for that one. <laughs> I'm surprised you even saw that. Oh I thought I did it so discreet. I just... <laughs> discreet guy. Oh god. Uh, I, just, well, like, I thought you. I, just, I thought it stopped. I thought. I thought you did a couple, couple face taps with your finger. <laughs> oh, have you ever seen the couple? This is weird. You're at the hotel. I, this happened to me in Laguna Beach. Mana and I were taking a walk around the hotel. We passed a hammock, and there was a couple in the hammock. You know, like like together like this. Oh, yeah. And like I made <laughs> eye contact. I felt like I walked into their bedroom. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. Oh, oh that. That's what I'm talking about, man. The minute you're on your back doing that curl and another man walks by, <laughs> gives you that look on his way to the beach. Oh, <laughs> don't, don't do it. Oh, In this God, particular couple. Like, oh, bro, yeah. this couple, what made it worse was they took their shoes off before they oh. got into the hammock. So the guy was barefoot laying down. In a, I'm sorry. Oh. I'm saying, way too comfortable in public. No, burn the hammock. <laughs> I'm telling you. And, and, that's, and then you got it. And, it, and it's also that I, I don't like the visual of like walking by and seeing seeing the shoes. <laughs> you know, just just the shoes, all worn out and shit. <laughs> I don't know. We've we've talked about that several times. All right, uh, are we all right on time? No, no, we're not. We we, we gotta wrap this up. <laughs> All right. Look at that the thing. We got we gotta we gotta get out of here. We got some ad reads to do. Once again, Pete and All Sebastian right. show. We're up on uh YouTube for some um the video, uh Apple casts for uh the audio. We're on audio boom. Uh we're also on Patreon, five dollars a month. Go over there and get some behind the scenes. We got some photos up there, some videos. Some people have been asking how they, can you walk them through real quick to go to Patreon? I had a guy email me again. He's like, can you say one time on the cast how you sign up for Patreon? Patreon. uh, You go to uh, patreon.com, type in the Pete and Sebastian show. We are a page will pop up, and it's pretty much self-explanatory. From and then I'll walk you through from there. Very simple. Five That's bucks, P-A-T-R-E-O-N dot com. You got it. All and right. we will see you right. next week. <laughs>